Greetings to you all in the precious and sweet name of our soon coming, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us thank God for giving us this opportunity that we all can come together and study the sound word of God from God's servant, Brother Rajan Thomas. Let's thank God for giving us this opportunity through this online platform of Zoom that we all can come together. Before we hand over this session to our dear brother, shall we all bow down and look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our gracious Lord and our blessed Heavenly Father, we thank thee, O Lord, for granting one more day in our lives that we all can come together and study the word of God. Thank thee, O Lord, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to this world, died for wretched sinners like us. Just as the psalmist said, Who am I, O Lord, that thou art mindful of me? Today we look at the cross and it's just because of the cross and of thy son that we all can come together, come boldly to thy throne of grace and call thee as our Abba Father. Today as we come into thy presence, O Lord, we thank thee for this time. Just as the hymn writer sings, Oh, how wonderful, oh, how marvelous. Today we look at the cross and it's just because of that grace and that agape love that was shown upon us. Just as it is written in thy word, there is none righteous, no, not one. And today we look at us, us and we just ask this question, why, O oh Lord, what, O oh Lord, did you see good in us? Today, as we come into thy presence, O oh Lord, we just come with humbleness. And only thing that we can glorify is only on that cross where thy son gave himself for us. Today, O oh Lord, as we sit in thy presence, we especially submit this session into thy loving hands. Especially pray for thy dear servant who will be teaching us from thy word. Pray that he will experience thy grace from above and give him the words to speak to each one of us, O oh Lord. But we who listen from thy word, the more we listen, the more we are responsible. And we pray that we all will examine ourselves. Search me, O God, and know my try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, we especially pray for the needs for today's ministry. Pray that there will be no hindrances or disturbances from the internet point of view and pray that there will be smooth internet connection. And we pray that there will that that it that it will be a, that it will be a time for us to examine ourselves, O oh Lord. We humble ourselves, O oh Lord, and we offer this time to the sweet to the O oh Lord. We ask all these things under the sweet and precious name of our soon coming, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Brother Rajan Thomas, over over to you. Rest of the announcements will be made after the session. So thank you very much and uh, the things from cold Kerala is uh, slightly raining so there is a great relief it was hot some one week back uh, so can you hear here yeah, brother can you hear yes, brother Audible. yes brother okay. good good that's fine uh, so we are discussing we have been discussing a very important and often ignored area of theology, the women's role. That is in the family, the society, and even in the church. So last week, last class we have seen, we have discussed elaborately First uh, First Timothy chapter 2 where we read what do you mean what do you mean by serve through childbearing or child rearing so that is the work of faith of the woman that is uh, as we read in first Thessalonians chapter 1 3 
and demonstrating her faith by works by even once it was a curse once it was a painful experience though even today it is uh, painful because of the fall and because of the curse of women and what a joy that a believing sister a believing woman when she bring out bring the children it's a unique ministry it should be a, it, it is it is given as a ministry and that is very unique and that includes not only child bearing and also child rearing and i emphasize on this point i have the testimonies of hundreds of brothers and sisters that how their mother more than their father more than their parent because father may be busy father may be busy in the work as well as the ministries but the examples the living examples that the mothers the sisters demonstrated to their children at the same time demonstrated to others in the assemblies are have been so unique and that brought forth lot of lot of fruits in our midst every believer who is useful for the lord in this era they have a story of their father and mother and especially the mother how they brought them up in the nurture and admonition of the lord with this introduction i am going to the next part we are going to see what the old testament revelations concerning women and then subsequently we will see the new testament or how the old testament doctrines were complemented in the new testament especially in the epistles of paul as well as peter which are of foremost importance vitality in these things now <clears throat> please read carefully leviticus chapter 18 at home <clears throat> not necessarily over here and uh, with the introduction which i going going to give now going to give there here you bear that that in your mind when you are reading leviticus chapter 18 we know that the law was given including leviticus chapter 18 was given sometimes 3400 years ago before and uh, when this law was given through moses the revelations were given through moses we should understand the situation and condition of the parallel civilizations and the parallel cultures of this world the world in fact was in utter spiritual darkness in so far as morality marriage and relationships and also to wish the attitude and role of gratitude to wish women and also their suppressed role in those societies so if you are a history student you will be able to understand the story in these three books you see uh, if it take any civilizations in the valley civilization or babylonian or egyptian or persian or even the new test the, the new testament time parallel civilizations i uh, will get a chapter on the role of women in those societies and those roles were very suppressive the social conditions of the heathen nations and civilizations are best summarized by the cambridge bible for schools and colleges which i am going to coach now so 
when the law was given, what was the social conditions? We know that there are so many kingdoms and civilizations in the history. The ancient Egyptian civilization and then the neo Egyptian civilization was prevailed at the time of Moses. And then Thereafter, we know the Assyrian civilization and then the Babylonian civilization, then the Persian civilization, like Iran and Iraq, and then the Greek civilization, and then comes the Roman civilization, Roman kingdoms and Roman empire, and then that is divided into, into Eastern and uh, Western uh, Roman empire, and then see other you know, uh, civilizations from AD 1000 and all, you know, see. You will not see, you will see all these societies in one way or the other, in various degrees. Maybe in civilizations, it is very, very bad. And uh, some other civilization, little more dignity, dignity were, were given. But watch the dignity and freedom given to women. When the law was given and thereafter how that was practiced, even how that was complemented in the New Testament, we cannot find out in all these civilizations or in all these cultures. So I am just quoting Cambridge Bible or schools and colleges some notes here. We know that among the Egyptians, marriage with sisters and half-sisters was not only really permissible. So to, to, to know the meaning of this, you know, you must really read Leviticus chapter 18. Read at home. We know that among the Egyptians, marriage with sisters and half-sisters was not only really permissible, but that its propriety was justified by the religious beliefs. It was connected with their religious beliefs. Interwoven with religious beliefs and practiced in the royal families, even the royal families. Then how about the non-royal, normal, uh, normal families? Uh, other abominations, as we know, existed there. And if cubes could be what in later times Cleopatra was, we know that uh, William Shakespeare in the 16th century brought up the, the, those cues like Cleopatra. In fact, there were several Cleopatras here in, the, uh, in, in those, this thing, especially in Egypt. And we know only one or two Cleopatras. Cleopatras. And uh, we know the Marcanis love Cleopatra. But uh, if you study this so called prominent woman in their societies, we may imagine, imagine the general dissoluteness of the people. Among Persians, Medes, Indians, talking about Indus, Indus Valley civilization, Harappa and all, Mohanjadara and all, Ethiopians and Assyrians, marriage with mothers and daughters were allowed. Can you imagine? And from the time of campuses, the Persian ruler is campuses between 330 to 322, uh, sorry, BC, BC, 322 to 3. Mary with the sister was regarded as lawful. The Athenians and Spartans go to Sparta, Athena, the Greek countries, the then Euro. Mary with half sisters were permitted. So now, with this description, go back to Leviticus 18 and read how the word of God given the right revelation about the sisters in BC 1450. BC 1450. When all this parallel civilization and uh, the previous as well as uh, the, the, the civilizations that follows, you will not find such a clarity, such uh, holiness, dignity. All these concessions to lust and either unclean acts 
with which the heathen world was full. As we read in Romans 1.27, we read a portrait of the heathen world. Paul, you know, who knows all this history, he portrays the conditions of uh, the heathen world in Romans chapter 1. Now, heathen world was full. They are falling away from the law of purity, implanted in the hand of heart of man, and now renewed for the Hebrew people. So, what this Bible hub, you know, notes uh, says is that, you know, even before the law was given, a law of purity was implanted in the heart of, heart of man. Even today, if you go to the, uh, if you go to the tribal areas of India, different places, so in the mission trips, we used to visit those places for ministry. And uh, North India, uh, we read there in Jagadalpur as well as uh, Chhattisgarh in different places. And even I used to go to Kubi area, the Kubi tribe, the forest Kubi tribes in South uh, Orissa, where we have the big church, about 350 uh, believers are over there. And uh, so all those tribal areas, even Kerala. So I used to go to the uh, Western mountains, high range of high range area of Kerala. There are Muduans tribe as well as uh, as well as uh, several others found over there. But they don't have any religion. Mostly they don't have a religion. They don't have any politics. You know, but in there, I studied their, their married relationships as well as the social life. And uh, there we can see a sort of purity, a sort of purity in married relationships and uh, anything. And uh, if some girl or boy break that purity, they will be alienated from their society, at least for, a, for some time. So, uh, all these, uh, that's what we you know, read, the falling away from the law of purity. But in B 1400 BC, those laws of purity implanted in the heart of men are given us, renewed and given us law to the Hebrews, to the people of Israel. The rights and honor provided to female slaves in Leviticus chapter 18. Please read. It sub shows the divine justice that is reflected and incorporated in the laws of God, in the word of God. And that is actually the divine justice. I love that word, divine justice. And uh, in those laws, divine justice absolutely reflected. Divine standard of holiness and morality is well reflected. In so far as relationships are concerned, violations of these commandments were subject to penalty even to the extent of death. Even to the extent of death. So, the married relationships were not well defined in the heathen world. In the heathen world. And uh, there is uh, polygamy, polygyny, and all these things are related to their economic conditions as well. You know, the marriage between sisters and cousins are permitted because the family as such should not be going to the other families. And, uh, and uh, the bodily lusts are permitted. Uh, those who are from Kerala, you know there is a saying that among the Namudris, the so-called higher class people, the Aryans, the Nambudris. You know, they have a saying that uh, one marriage but several illicit relationships. And uh, if you say in Malayalam, you know, those who are Malayalis, they better understand that usage of the Kerala sayings and all. Uru Velim, Uru Velim, Pala Sammandangalam. You know, for if there's a legal 
wedding, marriage, probably with their cousins. But these Nambudaris in the evening, they go and make lot of relationships with the other ladies in the in the in in, in other other and the lower societies in the in the especially among the those those who they consider as below their status. They say there is no problem for that. There is untouchability prevailing among them. But as far as, you know, this illicit relationships, you know, because the problem is they don't have the law. They never follow the word of God. They never follow the word of God. I am remembering that, you know, one of the illustrations uh, I heard in back in 98 when I went to West Bengal and I was doing a training program over there. And in the northern West Bengal, especially in Siliguri and around, there is a tribe called the Lepcha tribe. Lepcha tribe. And uh, one evangelist, you know, he came from there for the training class. You know, I was giving training how to teach children as well as youth. So the methods of communication. Me and the others, we were all uh, Lord Servant Abraham Thomas Pullard. Uh, and uh, and uh, 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 that time, Santosh Thomas was not there. It was in Jamdara. Santosh Thomas was not there. But Shana Engel was there. About 40 evangelists as well as, uh, uh, as, well as young people came for such training. And this brother was there. Uh, this His name was Saroj Depta. Sorry for telling his name. However, he was a commanded evangelist. But he from the Lepcha tribe. And later on, I found that, you know, he, he uh, did not do his wedding marriage through, uh, as per the word of God. So when I asked him, asked him, he clearly said, this is my tribal culture. This is the culture of my tribe. So what I would like to say that the whole, the people from different nations and heathen nations, they went according to their conscience, according to their cultures. But the word of God is the standard. And such tribes, such people, we must give, you know, uh, the, 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 the courage, uh, the, 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 the word of God. Then only they will become to the uh, courage uh, uh, as far as, you know, uh, standard of the word of God, standard of divine kingdom. Throughout the old times, we read an array of godly women and their virtues and shortcomings were recorded for us in the inspiring lessons. We can see an array of godly women throughout the Old Testament, even before the law was given. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the apostle Peter stated concerning the behavior and outward appearance of believing sisters. So, concluding the doctrine the Old Testament as well as New Testament concerning women. Now, not only Paul has, we, we are going to see what Paul has taught or Paul had taught uh, in his epistles. Now, Peter as well, you know, he, he, he really uh, gave the revelation or the doctrine and he concluded those doctrines as we read in 1 Peter chapter 3 5 and 6. First Peter 3, 5 and 6. There we, Peter says, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Whose daughters you are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. First Peter chapter 3, 5 and 6. So, what is the meaning of this verse? But exactly Peter tried to bring this. The Holy Spirit inspired Peter to select Sarah to be the representatives of all holy women in the Old Testament. And then 
then he connects with the New Testament holy woman later on. So I, I am repeating that the Holy Spirit in Spain, by the conclusion of the doctrines by AD 65, 66, when he was writing uh, the epistle of Peter, the Holy Spirit inspired Peter to select Sarah to be the representative of all holy women in the Old Testament. Sarah, he found Sarah is qualified to be the representative of all holy women in the Old Testament. There were hundreds of holy women in the Old Testament. As we read, like Miriam, or when it comes later on, you know, Hannah uh, and, uh, and several, several we see throughout the Old Testament history. Peter found by the moving of the Holy Spirit that Sarah can be portrayed, you know, as a representative to represent all these holy women in the Old Testament. So I hope you understand. A close examination of teachings of Paul and Peter on believing women are based around Sarah's spiritual qualities. If you clearly examine those verses, but Paul as well as Peter here, Peter mentioned over here. The, there are mentions, we are going to see later on, you know, what Paul said and Peter said but they were emphasizing, you know, uh, the sobriety, subjection, and silence. And that was found in Sarah. That's why Sarah was selected by the Holy Spirit to be the representative of all uh, Old Testament women as well as subsequently we are going to see that the New Testament believers as well are the children of Sarah. So here, or followers of Sarah, by example, sobriety, subjection, and silence. Uh, or even obedience. Uh, I did not mention that, obedience. Sobriety. The Greek word used is sophrosune. Sophrosune. Sophrosune is soundness of mind and soundness of judgment. It is a habitual inner self-government as thanks to W. Wine, how much he worked out from the, the, the Greek, uh, in the Greek, you know, uh, grammar and all, he brought this, his Greek, the best commentary, the best dictionary, the Greek, English Bible dictionary, biblical dictionary, so there it says that sound judgment of soundness of mind is the habitual inner self-government with this constant reign on all passions and desires. See, the reign on the passions and desires which would hinder the temptation to these from arising or at all events from arising in such strength as would overbear the checks and barriers. Beautiful definition. Why sisters are maybe sometimes or the woman, they cross the barrier, cross the border because they are not able to reign the passions and desires which would hinder them temptation to these from arising at all events from arising in such strength would or be the checks and barriers in life. So, uh, what I understand from this is, you know, the constant rain, the soundness of mind and soundness of judgment will act as a rain to control our inner, inner passions and temptations and desires. This is what the Lord, you know, really wants, like uh, Sarah, to to to, to uh, all the uh, honorable women of God to be like Sarah. Now, it is the inner man, the, in the inner man, or uh, actually, the, the I'm discussing about the soundness of mind or sound judgment, 
And uh, about this, what Paul said, Paul stated in Ephesians chapter 315, that is not only for uh, women, but for men, for everybody, the inner man. There is an inner man in Ephesians chapter 317. And uh, the inner man should be always soundness of mind and sound judgment. Now, you cannot achieve soundness of mind and soundness of judgment by studying philosophy, some studying history, or some so studying about uh, uh, several, uh, you know, general knowledge and philosophies or, you know, uh, which we get, you know, over several of the, of the uh, so-called uh, uh, moral lessons. There are moral lessons everywhere. Even, even in Damayana as well as Mahabharata, you see moral lessons. In all the so-called uh, uh, religious books and so-called religious scriptures, even in Vedas as well as Irigasas, or even in the uh, in the Upanishads, there are more lessons given. You may find sometimes you know, that is better than you know the moral the morality that is given in the word of God. You know, some people may say, but I am saying that the soundness of mind and soundness of judgment, it comes only to the born again believers by the very work of the Holy Spirit. And that too, when they study and understand the word of God, the divine standards through the help of the Holy Spirit. So that's what Paul mentioned in Ephesians 3, our inner man should grow. So now look, this Sarah, she had an inner man. Now, if you study a cursory character study of Sarah would reveal the sobriety, you know, the, the Greek word I already mentioned, the soundness of mind and sound judgments that she had demonstrated. Of course, she had some faults and belief. Everybody, including Abraham, you know, he had, you know, uh, some sort of, you know, false and unbelief you know he went to egypt or you know he he his uh, relationship with uh, uh, hagar and all uh, is so you know is uh, is uh, uh, is the examples of his faults because human beings but generally if you study the character of sarah uh, in her life it is demonstrated the soundness of mind and sound of judgment because subjection Obedience and submissiveness to Abraham is evident in her calling him the Lord or Master. Now look, that's what you know, Paul brings. That's what Peter brings. Sarah as a representative. Now he called Abraham Lord. Abraham Lord. See, this is a, it's a very important matter. Lord. You know, this is what you know. Uh, uh, this is what Abraham called. Abraham called the the God, Lord, Yahweh, Lord. That means that means Sarah. What she did was, you know, she she uh, considered Abraham, uh, even though the notes are not given there. Considered Abraham as a representative of Yahweh, as a representative of Lord. And therefore, she has shown that subjection, obedience, and submission clearly to Abraham. Now, every sister really must understand so far as their relationship with their husbands. When it comes to when it comes to New Testament, uh, the notes are not given there. I think I, I should add. You know, Paul when he writes the book of Ephesians, he's addressing the wives. You know, in line with what Peter wrote, wives submit to your yourself and to your own husbands as unto the Lord. See here, what a beautiful connection. Sarah 
called Abraham Lord. By that she considered her as the representative of the Lord. Of the Lord, the Yahweh. Now comes to, you know, bearing all these Old Testament examples, the Holy Spirit is bringing, you know, it's transferring the Old Testament to the New Testament, to the practical life of the sisters. Why submit ourselves, yourself and to own husbands as unto the Lord? In fact, this 522 is practiced by Sarah in the, in the Ephesians 522, though it is written in AD 60, you know, that was demonstrated by Sarah in BC 2000 or 2100. 2000 or 1900, that period. And the silence in public was evident in Sarah being in the tent. So, from First Timothy chapter 2, I clearly mentioned and exposed rather than a public ministry, she got a ministry more private, more in-house, rather than an outhouse, outside ministries, public. The sisters, they have an in-house ministry, especially with their family. And even in the assembly, it comes, you know, uh, we are going to study all these things. You know, the spiritual gifts given to the sisters are more serving rather than preaching, teaching, be in the rulership. Okay. And uh, the spiritual gift given to the sisters are more serving. Like Phoebe served, Priscilla served. Akilla was teaching, Priscilla was serving. Phoebe, she was serving. And that's what exactly. Uh, you know, that's what exactly we read in Philippians. Lydia, she did. So, we will come to that later on. And the silence in public was evident Sarah being in the tent. Being in the tent. She was in the tent. By Abraham was outside the tent mostly. Especially conducting the war and leading more than 300 warriors. And he being the Lord, he being a master over there, even the heathen people at that time, they honored him. I'm talking about 4,000 or 4,000 years before. And in the action of Sarah, heard it in the tent door which was behind him. So uh, one, uh, one New Testament uh, verse uh, I discussed last time, they have to listen and study, keep on learning. Then it's in, in First Corinthians chapter 14. See, Sarah, she heard it in the tent door which was big. Now, when Paul was bringing, you know, some sometimes I heard from several sisters, uh, those who are uh, arguing on equality, liberty, and fraternity, even in the assembly, and uh, when discussing, you know, they lovingly mentioned to me that Paul was not qualified to say all these things. Paul was anti-woman. No, Paul was not anti-woman. It was not Paul's opinion. Had it was Paul's opinion or Peter's opinion, they would have quoted a lot of, you know, things in the heathen world in the front of philosophy and all these things. And in some societies at that time, they would say, it was a woman-dominated societies. So, but Paul and Peter gave the real freedom to women, spiritual freedom. They honored it. But the roles are defined clearly. Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him, behind Abraham. We read that. So she was, you know, not, not, uh, you know, very much outward but more inward. But at the same time, Whatever the Lord has embraced to her, she was hearing, she was listening. She was listening from the angels. So, see, the same concept is there in the New Testament. Let sisters you know, learn, keep on learning. Present active tense it is used. The Sarah became the representative of all holy women in the Old Testament, and all believing women in the New Testament have become. 
Now look. Now look. In one way we can infer that Sarah not only became the representative of the Old Testament woman, and it is also the New Testament woman. You know, we are all daughters of Sarah as well as as we became, even the New Testament believers became, as we rightly read in Galatians chapter 3, 7, children of Abraham. Originally, the children of Abraham was only the Israelites. He was the father of the nation, father of the nation of Israel. In the book of Galatians, when we come, Paul says he's not only the father of the Old Testament Israeli, but he's the father of the believers, all believers. That's why he was called the father of nations. And there is a promise when we were doing the eschatology, we have seen that, you know, there we discussed that all nations shall be blessed by you. There was a blessing to Abraham. And that, that Abraham, that blessing is come to us through Lord Jesus Christ. In that way, we are children of Abraham. And the sisters, we can one way infer, you know, we can say that the New Testament sisters, the sisters, those who are believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, as far as, you know, as far as following, they became following the steps. You know, you sisters are the daughters of Sarah, like all believers became children of Abraham. So hope it is very clear. And may God bless you to understand it better by reading. You please read, you know, Leviticus chapter 18 and all. During the earthly life of Jesus Christ, he was served. No, we are coming to the New Testament. Now we are going to start the New Testament. So, in one way, we may say that Sarah's actions and attitude and Sarah's demonstrative life, her life, became a model to all Old Testament sisters. We can summarize the ministries as well as the spiritual character of all women in the Old Testament. We can summarize that in Sarah. That was in Sarah. And the Old Testament women were following that examples. And when it comes to New Testament, we need to follow her examples because uh, because we are also children of Abraham and uh, we can say daughters of Sarah as far as the spirituality is concerned. Now, now we are going to transfer from Old Testament to the New Testament doctrine. So we know that the Old Testament doctrine is not, the Old Testament is not, uh, not contrasted in the New Testament. Jesus did not contrast it. Paul did not contrast it. They were complementing. About this subject, what we are discussing, during the earthly life of Jesus, Jesus Christ, he was served by several women folks. You are aware of that. He was worshipped by the sinful woman who, whose sins were forgiven by him. We read in Luke chapter 7, 37 and 48, he was worshipped. And then by Martha and Mary at Bethany, who graciously served him, and learn from him. Look, look, the principles of learning are given there in, in Martha and Mary's story, Nazareth's house in Bethany. If you go to Jerusalem still, you will see the house. Luke chapter 10, 38 to 30, 42, we read that. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, and many other women whose Who's, who ministered to him. Luke chapter 8, 1 to 3. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, and several others, other women who ministered to him, ministered him. In all these occasions, Christ's respectful and dignified attitude towards women folks were evident. I love to preach and study more on the uniqueness of Christ. The gospel meetings always, you know, I preach the uniqueness of Christ, comparing 
any persons, any so-called religious leaders or cultural leaders or so-called social reformers. In that uniqueness of Christ, dear brothers, you know, his dignified attitudes towards women folks were very, very clear. Very, very clear. His attitude, his conversation, his interactions. So, uh, in the Hindu scriptures, so-called scriptures, we see several of the God, man gods. There is a difference between God, man, Jesus Christ, and man gods. Devas. They are called Devas. You know, we know their story very well. I read uh, Mahabharata Ramayana and even story telling the Islam so-called their scripture. I studied all these things, especially in the Middle Eastern culture. Even sitting in Saudi Arabia, I studied, you know, or when while visiting Saudi Arabia near Makkah and Medina, I studied the history and all these things. The respectful and dignified attitude to waste women are not demonstrated by these people, whether they are historical or not. Maybe they are uh, the people, those who are the folk stories, and uh, but you will not find the respectful, dignified attitude to waste women that Christ has demonstrated. That was unique. That was unique. It is also notable that women were the last few remaining with him at his death on the cross and the first to arrive at the empty tomb. So, the Lord has given the Lord has given dignified attitude or shown a respectful attitude at the same time, there was a borderline which the Lord has given. So we need to learn a lot of things uh, from the life of Jesus, you know, concerning the attitude to which woman. Now, all these things are coming later on uh, when, when Paul writes uh, his writings about the attitude to which woman, especially to Timothy and all. Now, However, in all these occasions, their ministries were more in-house and private rather than in public. You know that Martha served and Mary heard, listened. That is an indication to which the non-public ministries of women in the New Testament. So those stories were in the mind of Peter and Paul when they were writing are the non-public ministries or private ministries of the stage, especially in serving. As I said, we find the ministries more in serving. Their ministries won't be that much evident outside. People might not have no touch. And uh, I know several of the Lord's servants as well as elders' wives how they must suffer. One Lord's servant's son was with me in Bahrain. And uh, sorry to tell the name. So, you know, the pioneer preacher and evangelist, V.T. Matai Angle. I used to visit Mumbai and all other places. And his son, Sunny, V.M. Sunny was with me. We were all together as bachelors in Mumbai. Before our marriage, we were there in Bahrain. And he told me that you know, they were living near below YMC in Kotayam town. And uh, those years there was no phone, no trans not much transportation facilities. And the traveling Lord servants, they come to Kotayam Bestanch. And the bus is lost. And they don't have any means of transportation. They don't have money to take a lodge or hotel. Midnight at about 9 o'clock or 9.30, you know, 
after which there were no buses at that time, especially the private buses were even they just, you know, dashed into home. They just go to visit the home. They need boarding and lodging. What Brother Sunni told me was, dear Amachi, dear mother, she used to sacrifice his, her dinner. She never eat and provide to these new servants, Lord servants. All their children are blessed in all respects. So there are so many. In Mumbai, I know several. Wherever we go, there are sacrificial services of the sisters are evident even today in the ministries. Yeah. If you visit North India, I know how much the sisters are serving, suffering, sacrificially doing their. It is not evident. It's not like public preaching. It's not pulpits. They don't have a pulpit, but they have a ministry. Now, this support, this truth is more supported from the fact for public ministries, women were not chosen by the Lord. Ah, this is very clear. Women were not chosen by the Lord. Only men were selected as the apostles for the public ministries I'm talking. Only men were present at the upper room. And the apostolic commission was given in Matthew chapter 28, 16, 20, only to men. Even, you know, I am doing some lessons on the upper room ministries. <laughs> Even yesterday I gave a talk uh, in the Bible class. And uh, this I am speaking nowadays, you know, this upper room ministry, lot of pressures are there. Doctrinal as well as practical life pressures that are the upper room ministry. So when I was uh, imparting those truths, I said the upper room was belonging to Mary, Mark's mother, that family, a rich family. It was a sort of inn plus conference room. Even in the upper room, when the Lord's Supper was introduced initially, it was a Passover dinner. Even Mary was not permitted to sit there. Only the apostles who became the foundation stones of the church were present over there. It is in such a background, Paul and Peter concluded the New Testament doctrine concerning the role. So, don't misunderstand. I, as I study this subject, as I try to decipher through the Old Testament as well as New Testament, Dear brothers and sisters, I found that sisters have more ministries, including childbearing and child rearing, and in the service ministries than the public ministries of men. The outward ministries of men. But God has chosen the men for the outward ministries. This must be clearly understood by you. Several sisters never understand, you know, they, they, they forget in this, uh, this uh, you know, there is, uh, I, I read, you know, Matthew chapter 5, sorry, Ephesians chapter 5, you know, be submissive to the husband, husband to the Lord. Actually, that particular chapter, if you take the context, it is talking about the spirit-filled life, how it should be reflected first in the family, in the personal Personal life, how it should be reflected. Ephesians chapter 5, read it. And then in the family, then in the society, then as far as the children is concerned, all these things are there. Ephesians chapter 5 and 6. And when we are reading all that portions, those portions, you know, the main thing given is, you know, unity as well as submissiveness. Submissiveness. It is not that you be submitting each other. Even each other. We have to be submissive. But then comes the submissiveness of the sisters to their husbands. Wives to the husbands. Let me just tell you from the New Testament studies as well as practically. The sister who never be submissive to the husbands. They never 
be submissive to the eldest of the assembly. I have seen several sisters. Sorry to tell that. But I have seen several sisters. Those who are highly educated. And those who are those who are doing a lot of ministries, they are always submissive to the elders in the assembly because they are they are learned how to be submissive to the husbands as Sarah. Then with this studies, next class onwards, we are going to see uh, the new testament. What is the role of role and ministry specified in the new testament, especially by Paul and Peter in their purposes. Thank you very much. Thanks for your patient listening. And uh, you may pray that, you know, I'm 8 o'clock. I have two hours of class in Logos Bible College, Bible School in, um, in Bihar. So please pray for my lectures over there. Thank you very much. May God bless you. On behalf of TERC and all who have joined today, we want to thank Brother Rajan Thomas for teaching us from the Word of God about the role of a woman. As you all can see in your, in your screen, please pray for tomorrow's session, Wonder of the Cross by Brother Koshi Matthew. Please uh, pray for tomorrow's session too. In closing, I request Brother Joy Varghese to please uh, close the session with a word of prayer as, as and especially pray for our dear brother Rajan Thomas as he is going to take today a few more sessions at 8 o'clock. Am I audible? Yes, brother. Let us bow down our heads, pray and give thanks to our God. Holy Father, merciful God, one more day you are granted to us. Thank you for this morning time. Our beloved brother Rajan Thomas was able to teach us the, from the scriptures, which is very important in our lives. For our spiritual growth, we need your word. It is the living bread for us. Jesus Christ himself is the living bread. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He sacrificed his life to save each one of us. Thank you, Father, for that supreme sacrifice you have beloved son offered on the cross for us. He has shed his precious blood by which we are cleansed, we are washed, we are accepted. Now we belong to you. Rajan was able to explain the most important role of women in the spiritual realm. Sarah is an example. He is a representative of all the daughters of the spiritual women of the world. Even Father Abraham is a, we are the children of Father Abraham by faith. We belong to you. Thank you for this wonderful relationship you have brought us into. Thousands and thousands of people around us, they are still in darkness. They do not recognize. And most important quality of a sister is serving. That is their attitude. Though there is not much public ministry, they have a great responsibility to bring up the children and also to produce children. That's what the women's role. Very important. And they are the example before the younger generation as well as to the younger sisters and the children. Lord has given the abilities and the skills to them. Lord is that in all submissiveness, in all sobriety, in all silence, they are serving the Lord as wherever you are placed. Thank you for the important teaching that through your servant you gave to us this morning. And we may understand it. We belong to our Lord that relationship you have brought us into. How much we should be thankful to the Lord for saving each one. And also this message should go to every person. For our spiritual growth, it is essential. And we need you. Yeah. Thank you for Dad and Thomas and his family and his labor for the Lord. Bless him with all.
God willing, tomorrow our Koshimati is going to teach. That is the, the our Lord went to the cross. He took the cross for us. He gave himself on the cross. Through that cross, we got eternal life and everlasting life. Everlasting and eternal inheritance. We are going to be with Christ forever. Thank you for all this TRC Munitionism. Thank you for enabling our Jubel to lead the meeting today. And this may continue. Last three years, this ministry is continuing and in the coming days also, without wherever your servants are, are your Lord is helping them to teach the word very systematically. Thank you for all the faculty men. Name by name, we bring on your throne. Lord, bless them with you and give your word to us so that we may. Thank you for all the participants. Commit all this matter. We may, this ministry may go very smoothly without any troubles, even networking. Thank you for all those young people who are listening and leading and helping and pray for each and everyone. Name by name, we come to your presence and seek your will. Let your will be fulfilled. Bless us with all as we disperse your grace will be here and also continue the ministry. Accept our prayer, praises, thanks to me. We bring it in the worthy, precious and sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Joy Vergis, Joy for closing this session with a word of prayer. And thank you to each one of all of you for joining for today's session. Have a nice day.